All right, people, I'm Johnny Scoble, and this is Chase the Heat. Uh, I got a great question from the bus. This is a, uh, this video is for the new people. This video is for the, the new chili heads. All right, I got a great question from Mighty Sauce 397. Question is, I'd be interested in a video giving advice on getting through a situation where someone got in over their head with something hot, how to keep composure and not panic. Now, thank you for the uh, question. It's a great, you know, right now it's a beautiful thing to address for a couple reasons. Number one, my pain, I just got over some cap cramps from a challenge I did this morning. You may have seen the video. Uh, his comment was in response to that video. Um, anyway, <clears throat> there, I, I know that I've answered this. Um, and the other reason it's a, a, the timing of it is great is because b with Super Hot, the spicy world of pepper people on Disney Plus and Hulu, there's a lot more people eating peppers right now than there were before, which is always a good thing. So there's a lot of people saying, what do I do if it happens to me? Because here's the deal. It's going to happen to you. <laughs> you know why? Because you're watching this video. It's in you. It's in you or you wouldn't be watching this. It's going to happen. So here's the deal. A couple things you need to remember. Number one, it's going to happen to you, for starters. Um, although, it is, you know, listen, I've, I've, I've had the occasion where I've talked about this. I was in uh, London. No, yeah, yeah, London. With somebody that was from New Zealand. And they were there for a belt match. League of Fire belt match. And they had never really had bad cap cramps before. And I know that because we ate something hot, they got cap cramps and acted like it was a complete surprise. It was new to them. They didn't know what they were dealing with. It was odd. I was like, so you can get, achieve high levels of, uh, you know, a tremendous uh, tolerance for chilies and never kill yourself in the process. It's like I, the analogy I use is nobody goes into a gym and, and bench presses 500 pounds. They do it gradually, right? So, uh, but the thing that's different between lifting weights and eating chilies is you don't have to, you know, you know, somebody who's not ready can eat something way too hot. And so that's what we're going to talk about. What do you do? First of all, it's a hard thing to keep in your mind when it's happening to you, but it's not going to kill you. Now, if you had an allergy to capsaicin, you probably know already, so you wouldn't be eating this. Um, and it's a difficult thing to try to keep in your mind. Like when you're panicking, you know, here's, let's talk about panic mode. Here, you know when panic mode hits? Here's when it hits. When you're you're experiencing a level of heat that you've never experienced before. Period. And it's still climbing, and you don't know where it's going. In our minds, as human beings, we can only fathom what we've experienced. So our level of hot is the hottest thing you've ever experienced. But boy, it goes way hotter than that, right? So, um, <clears throat> so it's difficult when it's happening to you to think, oh, Johnny said I'm going to be fine. I get it. But unless you have an allergy, it's not going to kill you. Um, if you, you Keeping busy will help you. Believe it or not, if you've watched videos of people doing challenges, me countless times, where I'll eat something hot and immediately start rearranging my desk. It's hilarious. People are trying to keep busy. It's not a, a thing. And I think in the moment, it's not something I, it, it's not like I say to myself, all right, go into busy mode or you're going to freak out. Busy keeps your mind off it. It's subconscious. We just start, you know, there's a great video. A perfect example of it is um, Chili Chinglish does the Tube of Terror video. All right. And when he does it, he starts he starts smoothing out the wrinkles in the tablecloth on the table, rearranging things on the table in front of him. So keeping busy will help. All right. Um, a couple things you need to remember, like if you seek relief from the pain, like the best thing you can do is embrace it. Capsaicin, embrace the pain. It really is important to do that because if you panic Here's the thing. Once you've been there before, it's like once you burn yourself really bad, when you burn yourself again, you're like, oh, here we go. But it's a path you've walked already. So you're like, ah, I've been down the show before. You know what I mean? It's just that first time. Now, each time you surpass something hotter than where you've been, you'll sort of get that. But once you're on the capsaicin journey, you recognize that that's part of it. 
So even though you will go to places where you haven't been, you've been there before in places you haven't been and lived through it. So you have that. Um, if you seek relief from things like there's there are some things you can do as far as immediate relief from the burn. And sometimes just the cold sensation can kind of distract you and keep you from panicking and freaking out. Because that was the real question. How do you stop from freaking out? Um, you know, milk, the more fat content in the dare in the milk you're drinking, the better it's going to help you. Like if you're if you're buying milk for a challenge, don't get two percent or skim milk. Because the dairy, the, the fat from the dairy adheres to your the receptors on your tongue, and that's what kind of gives you a little bit of assistance. So the thicker, the, the higher, like cream, heavy cream is going to be, you know what I mean? Um, uh, peanut butter. Peanut butter will offset the burn. And all these things that will offset the burn will kind of distract you from what's happening to you. But the truth of it is this. It's kind of like the, the person who, who drank too much we, from, health, you know, from school. Could coffee help a drunk person? No. You know, can sleeping for a half hour, or, you know, no. You know what helps a drunk person? Time to not be drunk anymore. So just like that with capsaicin, you can do things to mitigate it, but you really just got to ride it out. Um, so I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult thing. If you there are chili heads watching this that although you're still a new chili head, you've gotten to the point where something was hotter than you've expected and you live through it. All right. That same experience, that, that like, oh, I beat it, didn't kill me. You kind of have to carry that, that mindset going into it. And eventually, you know what'll happen? You'll get to a point, you'll be like, it's gonna hurt, I can't wait. I know it sounds bizarre, but it, it, you'll get there. And the reason that's, a, oh, it's a beautiful thing, it's an important thing because pain is a part of life. We break down and die, it's part of the human condition. So if there are people that, I mean, I know people, I have relatives who have done everything they could to avoid pain. You, we all know people that will, will the second, uh, you know, the smallest thing, it takes some aspirin, takes some Motrin, takes some Tylenol. Do you know what I mean? So take some Panadol, whatever. Um, you know, this will, uh, this will help you in life. If you can learn to embrace the chili pain, I promise you it'll overflow into your life. And when pain comes up, physical pain comes up in your life, because it will, you'll be better, better better able to handle it. If you, the great analogy is like football. If you played, like I played football, if you never practiced, if you just didn't practice with your team, and on game day you show up to a team that practiced, you wouldn't be able to execute plays on offense, you wouldn't be able to handle things on defense, and you would get hurt. You know what I mean? It's a scary thing to not be ready on game day. Well, if you've run from pain your whole life, when the day comes, as it most certainly will, where you experience pain, if you've run from it your whole life, that's a frightening, frightening day. It's too late to kind of build your pain tolerance. It's too late to change your approach and your mindset when it comes to pain. It's too late, and you've been running from it your whole life, and you're going to be scared. You know, I know people that the minute there's pain, they look for something to cover it up. Um, I And embrace it. So if you could... what. Just like the first time you ate a jalapeno, I was like, holy crap, that was really hot. And then that's that lower on the scale, right? If you're up to habanero or ghost, you've done it a few times where you've gotten hotter. I was like, okay, I can deal with this. That's the mindset you got to have. And that mindset, if you keep that going, it'll get easier and easier to not panic and freak out. So as much as keeping busy and offsetting it with things to mitigate the burn, like peanut butter and whatever, dairy... I think the greatest, most important thing, Mighty Sauce, 930, whatever, Mighty Sauce, the be the most important thing is going into it with that mindset that you're going to embrace this. You're going to embrace this. I know it's, it's, you know, you will get there. I promise you. I think even if you're early, you can say to yourself, that's where I'm going. I can kind of see it. Because here's the thing. Even if it's on a smaller scale, you like what, Spice does you, you wouldn't be watching me right now. Right? Even if it's just, you know, jalapeno ch potato chips, there's something about that tingle that you dig. Right? So it's a smaller scale, but it's the exact same thing. Okay? So embrace it. Embrace it. You're a capsaicinist. You're not a masochist. Yeah, you might be actually. 
You might be a sadist too, but what you are, you need to be a capsaicinist. Embrace that pain. It'll help you eating peppers. I promise you. Give you my word. It'll help you in life. This is a guy who's already experienced the benefits in my life facing real pain because of what I've done with peppers. I wouldn't lie to you. All right, so um, I hope that helps. Um, and it was, I shouldn't say Mighty Sauce, whatever. It was Mighty Sauce 9... 397. It was Mighty Sauce 397. Thank you so much for your question. Guys, listen, it's a good, we're, we're just starting pod season. There's a ton of new people that are eating pods this season that weren't eating pods next last season. And I'm talking to you. So um, if you've got a specific question you want me to address, first of all, there's no such thing as a dumb question. It isn't. There's no such thing. And I don't think, well, you've answered before. I don't care if I've answered the question 10 million times. You haven't heard the answer yet. And you need to. So if you've got a question you need to hear an answer to, please put it in the comment section and we will address it with Pepperology. Thank you, Mighty Sauce 397. In the description box, you're going to see a link for all the normal stuff. In the bottom row, you're going to see the lifeboat and my son, Johnny Scoville Jr. On the top row, you're going to see uh, Pepperology, where this video is going and all the challenges I've done, which is the one that kind of was a... That's where the mind, the, the creation for this video, the question aris, arose. Boy, I can't speak. How about that? All right, I love you guys. Be kind to somebody. Be kind to me. I'll be kind to you. Tell someone you love them because I love you. I'm Johnny Scoville, and this was Chase the Heat.